15% of people who go through a trauma will develop PTSD. 15%. What's the one thing that characterizes people who develop PTSD? A large capacity for dissociation. Okay, now we're fast forwarding now to one years old. There's, there's mobility, there's shame, there's approval and disapproval. And so what does this child do when they feel the distress of disapproval and the shame emotion? Well, what if their nervous system knows how to dissociate? Then the, the nervous system always builds on past skills. It will use that capacity to dissociate to f in service of whatever the defensive strategy the child is developing. Scapegoating, you know, kick the dog, um, projective uh, identification, you know, you're bad, I'm going to attack you, denial, repression, all those things. And to the extent that the child has a capacity to dissociate and to the extent that the child has an attuned caregiver, there will be a level of depth to those defensive states and structures. Now, now some children are born, children are born with various temperamental capacities. Robert Kloniger, on his, in his book, he's a famous developmentalist, in his book, Feeling Good, which is the simplest thing about that book, <laughs> everything else is dense beyond belief, practically incomprehensible, but really good if you could just kind of you know, dig into it, has determined that harm avoidant, th these are all temperamental characteristics that children are born with, harm avoidant, thrill seeking, persistence, Cooperative, cooperativeness, dependency, self-directedness, and get this, self-transcendence. Self-transcendence is a temperament, mental quality, that we're born with varying degrees of. Self-transcendence. No, why should there be a temperament, any quality? Why should we have a, a capacity for self-transcendence? I mean, where does that come from? Self-transcendence, to me, temperamentally, is the, the most unobstructed reflector of eros, of wanting to continue to integrate all the way to God. Self-transcendence. You take these characteristics and you put it together with self-aware consciousness, and you have a human race exploding out of Africa, creating endless languages and, and ceremonies and religions and gods and goddesses and shaman, and healing, and, and transcendent experiences, and magic, and myth. That's self-transcendence. And of course, as we develop, that self-transcendence isn't just about me transcending. It's about me serving the world in transcendence. So this baby, as he begins to develop, uh, respond to the, I have this shame, I want, I, I want to get, get regulated back. There can be interactive regulation until eight, 16 months. But at 16 months, a child can hide their emotions from a parent. Their brain is strengthened enough that if there's an emotion they want to hide, they hide it. So if I don't want you to see my, my anger, there's no anger there. If it's not safe to be angry, if it's not safe to be sexual, if it's not safe to be frightened, if it's not safe to be dependent, if it's not safe to be anything, I can hide it from my mother or father. Not only that, remember, how we relate with others is how we relate with ourselves. I can hide it from myself. So at 18 months, when our memory comes online, and we begin to have I, you, we, it, in the past, present, and the future, and we encounter the, the infinity of perspectives that that involves, and out of that infinity of perspectives arises self-aware consciousness. Self-aware consciousness arising out of an infinity of interior perspectives and an infinity of interpersonal perspectives. And out of that self-aware consciousness, when I'm stressed, I will react to that stress as my nervous system is programmed to react. If I had an attuned caregiver, mostly I won't dissociate all the way. Even if there's cultural biases, I'll just dissociate partway. When you just dissociate partway, you develop, where's my defenses? <laughs> well, you develop, develop what Freud called neurotic defenses, which is, you know, I'm acting weird, but I have some capacity to act weird, to know that I'm acting weird. But if that capacity to dissociate is 
deeper and you're still not in a, a, a secure attached relationship, then you develop characterological defenses where I act weird and I have, not only do I have no knowledge of I act weird, if you push me about acting weird, you know what? You're evil. You're bad. You know, and I need to destroy you. Get away from me. And so here's where we have pathological narcissism, borderline personality disorder. Carry signature defensive characteristic of pathological narcissism is when challenged, they demean and withdraw. I am going to make you disappear, and I'm gone. You no longer, you have threatened me, you have put me in touch with something I don't want to be in touch with. I can't stand that pain, and so I can't even be aware that I have the pain. I can't be aware that I can't stand it, and so wham, you're bad, I'm gone. Pathological narcissism which is actually more, more pathological than borderline personality disorder. Borderline personality disorder is you have put me in touch with the bad pain. You have caused that bad pain. I have to cling to you and torture you until I feel better. It's cling and torture. And the reason why, now pathological borderline personality disorder is more dangerous to us as therapists because clinging and torturing, they can do all kinds of horrible things to us. And also borderline personality disorder has a lot of other characteristics that are very, very difficult. Want boundary violations? Um, um, uh, think you're the greatest, and then think that you're um, really bad. Um, uh, uh, self mutilation. Borderline personality disorder tends to attack bodies when they're distressed. So other people's bodies are their own bodies. It's very, very physical. So cling and torture. Demeanor withdrawal, cling and torture, without any insight. Now we can have. Impulses to demeanor withdrawal and cling and torture, but if we if it's a neurotic defense, we can be aware of it and go, God, I'm sorry, you know, I was a jerk five minutes ago. Or, you know, I you know I know that I didn't call you for a day. I was just so upset and I decided to call you. We can then we can auto-regulate back to harmony. But those are neurotic defenses. Those are not characterological defenses. Now, at any stage of this developmental sequence, a securely a secure attachment, a secure relationship starts a healing integrative process. And so a child can have a lot of capacity for dissociation. Say they had a, a, a trauma that was an unavoidable trauma when they were six months old, eight months old. This is one of the things that got Bowlby all interested in attachment. A lot of children were displaced during World War II from their parents necessarily. And those children were developed in psychopathology. He, did, he explored it, and, and it happened to Bowlby himself. And so he started studying them and found that these children did badly unless they had a successful intimate relationship in their developmental arc. That successful intimate relationship was associated with these children developing what was called secure autonomous attachment. 